Praise God, family. Sorry about that. We've been muted. We thank you for the opportunity to preach and to worship with you today. Uh, we are not pre-recorded today. We are live. And so we pray and ask God that he would bless us richly and that he would keep all of the uh, distractions out of this Zoom room for us today that we can focus on his word. We ask God to bless us and bless you with his word today as we look at emancipation just a little bit, as we look and his uh, liberating power to us. The, the topic that we're going to talk about today is from emancipation to freedom. Uh, we're going to talk about emancipation to freedom. Romans chapter 8, verse 28 to 31. If you have your Bibles, just turn them with uh, to Romans chapter 8, 28 to 31. Uh, and you'll find these words in there. And we know that all things work together for good. To them that love the Lord, our God. To them who are called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate. To be conformed to the image of his son. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Father, we pray that as we dive into your word, that you would bless us richly, that you would help us, O oh God, to draw out from it the strength that we need to draw out from it uh, the, 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 your power to continue to be all that you have designed for us to be. And so, God, have thine own way with us. In Jesus' name, uh, we pray. Amen. It is Emancipation Day. It is Emancipation as we celebrate the liberation of those who were slaves of our ancestors all those years ago. Uh, and as we celebrate it in joy, as we celebrate it, thinking about the goodness of God, thinking about the greatness of the king and the parliament in England, we, there's some stuff that we should never forget. There's some stuff that we should hold on to. There's some stuff uh, that we always need to remind our children so that it always uh, continue to press forth in the fight uh, from emancipation to freedom. Now, I don't want you to, to remember, if you look back, anyone who has done history, uh, this phrase, past day six ands, point the six ends and not six years, no six years. Uh, uh, there's no nice or easy way to share and discuss the atrocities that our ancestors have been subjected to. There's no easy and delightful way to share with our progeny or future generations the nasty, inhumane, and ungodly acts perpetrated on our great-great-great-grandparents by Bible-wheeling and praying European white folk. The difficulty with which we have to face a history uh, that for, most, uh, for the most part has been orally recorded and tainted by the influence of our oppressors. Uh, uh, the demonic, decisive, and dismissive denial by the oppressors and their successors uh, that cast doubt upon the truth of the horror that was and still is slavery. Uh, documents defining the destruction of a people described as fiction by those that are possibly embarrassed by its contents, alleging always that the veracity of these documents are in question uh, uh, and as such they have become the apocrypha of the history books of the African diaspora uh, so that they won't be read by the African diaspora who live so comfortably now that we cannot even believe these things ever happened uh, and is that not the greatest trick of the devil to convince people that he does not exist, that evil does not exist, that it never really happened uh, uh, the, the saying is still true. He who forgets his past is doomed to repeat it. Uh, uh, documents as the Willie Lynch letter, The Making of a Slave. If you can Google it when you get a chance, uh, it's a good read. Uh, if you Google it and you read it, then you might be able, better able to help our children know what we are fighting against in the battle, uh, not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities and rulers of the darkness of the day. The speech was said to have been delivered by Willie Lynch on the banks of the James River in the colony of Virginia in 1712. 
12, Lynch, a British slave owner in the West Indies right here, was invited to the colony of Virginia in 1712 to teach his methods of, uh, to the slave owners there. Uh, he said he had a foolproof method for controlling your black slaves, uh, and he guaranteed every one of them, if installed correctly, it will control the slaves for at least 300 years. And, and it's just two steps. The first step was to divide and deceive to divide by age, color, intelligence, size, uh, male or female, gender. Uh, uh, and, and step two was simply to keep the body and take the mind, uh, to, to destroy the will to resist, uh, but keep the body strong enough to do the work that you need the slaves to do. Uh, whether it's fact or fiction, as they're, as they're purporting that it might not be real, whether it, whether it turns out to be fact or fiction, as described by the oppressor, the negative effects of slavery are real and not imagined. Uh, Self-loathing based on poor self-image and the new age identity crises uh, are real and not imagined. Uh, brother and sister hating one another based on envy, jealousy, and simple stupid little differences is real uh, and not imagined. Uh, and not just among strangers, but within the nuclear family, skin color, hair texture, eye color, school grades, uh, feed favoritism, and breeds envy that creates hate. Mental regression, spiritual aversion, and psychological depression are real and not imagined. With our leaders subject to the latest form of lynching, which is character assassinations, or enlightened people eliminated, or shining lights locked up or shut down, or spiritual shepherds replaced by charlatans claiming to preach the word of God, and the only sermon they could come up with was slaves, obey your master because Paul says so in Ephesians 6, 5 and Colossians 3, 22. Uh, they stole 10 to 15 million people uh, from their homeland, uh, stripped away their human dignities, uh, packed them like sardines in a damp, dark, filthy sub-level of the ship, brought them to a strange land with no way of getting back home, whipped them into submission or to debt, and brainwashed their children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren into believing that we are substandard and subhuman. And for almost 400 years, they beat, they murdered, they raped, they kidnapped, they sold and bought. They physically, mentally, and spiritually abused a proud and strong people and treated them as slaves and property. And then, and then, my brothers and sisters, they expected them to be happy when the king and parliament of Great Britain passed a law abolishing the institution of slavery. They expected us to be grateful when the king passed the law institution, uh, the abolishing of slavery uh, throughout the, its colonial empire, including Dominica and the rest of the British West Indies. Uh, somehow this law passed in 1833, but yet not effected until 1834. Make no mistake about it. It was not the fear of God, nor the benevolence of the king, nor the collective conscience of parliament that urged on this proclamation. So what did, and I'm glad you asked, and I'm glad your minds are thinking right now, no sir, no ma'am, it was not God, it was not the king, it was the conscience continuous fight and struggle of the Haitians between 1791 to 1804. You've got to know your history. It was the revolts that began in Tobago in 1802. It was the revolting of the slaves in Barbados in 1816. In Guyana in 1823, it was the revolts that happened in Jamaica in 1831 that convinced the authorities. It was the poisoning of the oppressors that convinced the authorities uh, that we are a force to be reckoned with. Uh, and when we catch a vision of liberty, uh, we are a dangerous people. Uh, our ancestors uh, did not sit quietly and yield to slavery, regardless of what your history books tell you, we are now finding out. We are analyzing what happened and we recognize that they did not just sit quietly and yes, massa, no massa. They fought every day and in every way. They did not let their enslaved bodies enslave their minds. They fought back everywhere, every day, and in every way. They, the, the enslaved 
resisted the system. Uh, if you don't believe me, you can read Bridget Brereton's book uh, in a lecture she gave to the University of the West Indies in 2007. Uh, she said uh, they, uh, they ran away repeatedly uh, and created maroon settlements, and we know about them, uh, wherever they could, uh, especially in the hilly or remote areas. Uh, they refused to obey orders. They harassed overseers. They refused tasks. They broke estate equipment and machinery. And my brothers and sisters, they went on strike and they answered back their masters. Uh, they fought tooth and nail to get their freedom. Uh, and so don't let anybody let you know or tell you that our ancestors sat down and did nothing uh, and allowed themselves to be enslaved. Uh, like Kunta, they kept on running as much as they could. Uh, they took their floggings and they kept on fighting in a true give me liberty or give me debt mentality. Uh, they fought for their freedom uh, until the king, uh, then the parliament created the farce of emancipation without freedom. And, and, and so they created the six-year apprenticeship uh, declaration called Predial Apprenticeship uh, right here in Trinidad. And the word went out, free at last, free at last. Uh, but, but still, the masters required that we go to the fields to work uh, after a year of chatter uh, that the earthly king had granted freedom. Uh, a whole year of anticipation of old men telling stories of those who had fought in the courts uh, and in the presence of the king and the parliament for a liberation uh, and all the revolts that had happened uh, uh, for the liberation of our children. And now the day is here at last. Uh, we are told that we are emancipated but not free. What gives? An eyewitness, uh, Lieutenant Colonel uh, Cappadoci, uh, details what happened. Uh, and, and this is emancipation. And so I'm obligated to let you know so that our children would know so that you can tell somebody. Uh, we gathered in front of the governor's house in Port of Spain to ask the question, what gives? Uh, and led by young men, the old men shouted, uh, pass the six hands, point the six hands. Uh, not six years, no six years. We want to be free now. Uh, we want to be free today. Uh, we want emancipation and liberation right now. Uh, and my brothers and sisters, uh, as much as they want you to believe in the benevolence of the white man, in the benevolence of, of those oppressors, in the benevolence of the Creole slaveholder, the Creole slaveholder cried out in response, uh, martial law, let's shoot them, let's lock them up, uh, because if we cannot own them legally, let's lock them up uh, and we will profit on prisoners uh, if we cannot survive on slaves. Uh, I want you to know uh, that our people fought tooth and nail uh, to get us to where we are now. Uh, you have got to know your history because it has always been a fight for us. Uh, they were set free uh, with nothing for our time uh, and nothing for our labor. No money, no loans, no land, no education. They were set free and they were put out. Uh, yet the slave owners uh, were paid 20 million pounds in 1834. They were paid 20 million pounds uh, for the loss of their property. And the structures of the planter control and white power remain fully intact. Uh, and the battle continues to today. Uh, and the problem is that you have heard of the Tubmans. Uh, you have heard of the Kings. Uh, you have heard of the exes uh, and the American heroes of the past. Uh, but your own history, you still do not know. Uh, you do not know of the Edgar Marie Smith. Uh, and friends, uh, the lawyers who in 1884 petitioned for Emancipation Day to be a holiday. Uh, and Trinidad and Tobago was the first country in the world uh, to declare Emancipation Day a holiday on the 1st of August. Uh, you do not know of Reverend Bridgman, uh, the pastor in the Port of Spain African Methodist Episcopal Church, uh, who was heavily involved in, in, in 1908 uh, in the education and development of the African diaspora and church. And, and you do not know of church member Henry Sylvester, a member of the Port of Spain African Methodist Episcopal Church uh, who founded the African Association, uh, which was the forerunner to the Pan-African movement. Uh, you do not know of Reverend Peter Batson, uh, the savior of the AME Church, uh, and at, in a time when it seemed like the best choice for the black man's survival for a young black brother was to head off to fight in World War whatever, to migrate and fight and die in World War 
fought two battles uh, for foreign lands uh, as they believed uh, that they had a better chance fighting over there than they did trying to make a living over here. Peter Baxton preserved a liberating gospel for Trinidad African diaspora and the ostracized whites uh, who loved us, uh, providing hope and support for the black man uh, trying to get an education and make a living. You do not know of William Henry Mayhew, founder of Gaines Normal AME Primary School in 1920, so that the normal African children could receive education. Uh, he renamed the church Metropolitan. He opened up a dry goods store and employed many other church members and community, and community members and helped many people in the community. You do not know of Reverend Frederick Lewis and Mrs. Lewis, uh, who started Blakely AME Preschool, uh, Oh, in the 1920s, uh, to help the construction of strong educational foundations uh, for myself, because I went to school there, and tens of thousands of others uh, uh, in the last hundred years. Uh, you might not know of Reverend Dr. Fleming Emmanuel Joseph, uh, a businessman and presiding elder of the AME Church, uh, and at the time of his death was worth over about 60 million TT dollars, uh, and one of the two African men uh, to own a building on Shagornas Main Road, uh, and the two buildings still remain, the two African-owned buildings still remain up to today. Uh, he built churches and schools and homes for all people and provided scholarship and access to education for many. You might not know of Reverend Torn and Mommy Torn. Uh, you might be new to the church, so you might not know uh, that they are the founders of this great Bethany, uh, who saw in you uh, the potential to be great uh, and gave their life and essence uh, to help you to be all that you can be and bring this community out of darkness uh, into God's marvelous light. Uh, you might not know of Reverend Iris, uh, Reverend Dr. Iris Dorothy Williams, uh, the founder of AME churches in Trinidad and in Haiti. She established many nurseries and Nestor Patrick preschools in Trinidad and sacrificed many things for the work of God and the development of our people. These are heroes uh, that you might not know about. Uh, people like you and me who rose to the call, uh, who fought for liberation, uh, who fought for education, uh, who fought for righteousness and justice. Uh, our children don't know them because we are still being brainwashed uh, into thinking that we came up by pulling up our own bootstraps, uh, forgetting that somebody had to march, uh, somebody had to fight, uh, and somebody had to die so that we could wear boots today. Uh, the battle rages on, uh, and we have got to remember our past uh, and the God who brought us out and the God who brought us through. Uh, we cannot trust the history to the eyes and pen uh, of the oppressors. Uh, and that's why so many statues are being pulled down now. Uh, we can no longer tell our children uh, the oppressor story and expect that they will prosper and grow. Uh, we must tell our own story through our own eyes. Uh, that was, uh, it was God, uh, that it was God, uh, that it was God and not, not a white God. Uh, but the God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, uh, who liberated the minds of, of our ancestors. That our ancestors fought for their freedom. Uh, they didn't lie down. They didn't give up. They fought for their freedom. And ours uh, today, so that, so, so that, so that those, those poor homeless, uh, hated ex-slaves uh, worked harder for themselves uh, against the accepted racialism, against the accepted prejudice, uh, against the cultural battles spurred on by the British, uh, pitting Africans against Indians uh, in a race war that continues today. Yeah, that's right. That's where it started uh, when the British told the Indians not to trust the Africans uh, and told the Africans not to trust the Indians. Uh, you don't even know why you're fighting today. Uh, you don't even know who caused it. Uh, our great grandparents uh, fought through all that so that today we can choose to be lazy. That today we can choose to do nothing. Uh, uh, they taught one another to read and to write uh, in the secret sessions of the church uh, and ensure that their children received education through the church uh, and sent their grandchildren to universities of the church uh, so that today these educated, enlightened, and comfortable individuals uh, can turn their backs on the church uh, and community without concern or consideration for those caught in the Maya and uh, indigence. No, sir. The battle rages on today. And we have an obligation 
to write and tell our own story and not just our history, but a story, a narrative that reflects the spirit of our Trinbago people, a, a narrative that unites us in, in, in a judge jihaji by type fashion. Uh, uh, Brotherhood of the Boat, uh, we cannot afford in this country to be bipolar in race uh, because we are in this together. And for many people like me, uh, there is no dividing line. Uh, my children are who they are because of the Australia. That's the boat that brought the Chinese immigrants in 1853. My wife will tell you she got some Chinese in her. Uh, the Fatal Razak, uh, uh, that's the boat that brought the Indian immigrants in 1845. I got some Indian in me. And the unnamed slave ships uh, that brought my forefathers, my great-great-grandfathers uh, from the first recorded ship in 1606, uh, of 470 enslaved Africans uh, brought to Trinidad by Dutch slaver Isaac de Verney. Uh, we are the product of the open minded love and generational combination of peoples of the Eastern continent. Uh, and we are still vociferously asking the question today. Why can't we all just get along? So we need to tell our story that, that God has kept us uh, and continue to remember the lessons of our forefathers. Uh, and we as we fight, as we fight to forge a better future for our tomorrow. And we know uh, that all things work together for good to them that love God. Romans chapter 8 verse 28 says, uh, to them who are called according to his purpose. That's what it says. Uh, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate uh, to be conformed to the image of his son, uh, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Uh, moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, whom he all he called them he also justified and whom he justified them he also glorified and so we know uh, that God has brought us through all these things so we know uh, that God has blessed us from our mother's womb and has brought us this far so we know that we are who we are because of the, the past uh, that our people have uh, and so what shall we say then to these things uh, if God be for us uh, who can be against us uh, here's what I say to these things uh, let us never forget let us remember to keep on fighting. Uh, our grandparents and great-grandparents fought from nothing, uh, from no property, from no money, from no education, from no loans and no lands, uh, so that you can own houses today, uh, so that you can have degrees today, uh, so that you can have money in the bank today. Uh, stop giving up so easily on yourself and situation. Uh, there is no temptation that has taken you that God did not provide a way out of for you. The battle is not yours is the Lord's. Uh, just keep on fighting. Uh, if they could do it 400 years ago, if they could do it 150 years ago, you have no excuse uh, uh, to sit down on your laurels right now. Get up and keep fighting. Uh, let us remember to keep on learning. Uh, do not give up on education. Uh, it is the key uh, to you behaving better. It is the key to you receiving more. It is the key to you understanding your situation situation, assessing your circumstances and making better decisions. Uh, keep on learning. Uh, keep learning because we're now finding out about our history. Keep learning because we're now beginning to interpret what was written. Uh, keep learning because we're now liberated enough uh, to be able to interpret for ourselves uh, what had gone on in the past. Uh, they had lied to us so many times before. Our foreparents didn't sit down and just take it. Uh, they fought in every way, uh, every day, and anyhow, they could to get out of slavery. Keep learning uh, and remember that uh, collectively we can accomplish more than individually. Uh, stop hating on your brother and sister. Stop letting them divide you by stupid and foolish lines. Uh, love on your brother and sister. Let's work together to build our communities. Let's work together to build our church. Uh, let's lean on each other. It doesn't matter what skin color you have. It doesn't matter what your eyes look like. It doesn't matter if your hair is soft and curly or nice
taste like wood. It doesn't matter what you look like or what you sound like. We, if we come together, then there is nothing that can stop us. And they recognize that all 500 years ago, they knew that if we ever came to the collective consciousness together, that we are a powerful people. We are a chosen generation and a royal priesthood. And there is nothing that we cannot do together that we would be unstoppable. And so stop fighting one another because collectively we can accomplish much more than individually. And finally, my brothers and sisters, I got to let you know uh, to remember to trust in the Lord and lean not on your own understanding uh, because he who sets us free, uh, uh, he who sets us free uh, and who the Son sets free uh, is free indeed. Uh, he loves us uh, and even through the atrocities and the evil actions of the past. Uh, we are here and we are who we are because because of his grace, trust in God. Because had it not been for the Australia, had it not been for the Fatal Rosak, had it not been for those unnamed ships that brought our ancestors, we would not be here today. Trust in God. Huh? Because it had it not been for the heroes of the past, the Reverend Fleming E. Joseph, the Re Reverend William Henry Mayhew, had it not been for Reverend Bridgman and Reverend Peter, had it not been for those of the past, we would not be here today. Huh? Trust in God. He has made a way for us. Huh? He has predestined us from the beginning of time to be here and to be conquered. And so trust in God, because I know he will make a way for us. Uh, he has done it before. He can do it again. Uh, I know he's the lily of the valley. I know he's a bright and morning star. I lift up mine eyes to the hills, and I know from whence coming my help. Uh, I know that my help coming from the Lord God Almighty, who maketh the heavens and earth. Uh, and I will not be afraid. Uh, I will not cower. I will not run away. Uh, I will stand flat-footed on the battlefield, knowing that God fights my battles for me, that God will make Make a way somehow that God will make my enemies my footstool. I know he can do it because he did it before. He can do it again. He is God all by himself. He's the God of yesterday, today, and he will be God forevermore. And I'm going to trust in him. I'm going to let him have his way. I'm going to lean on him and let him take me to where he wants me to be. My brothers and sisters, from emancipation to freedom, keep on fighting. Keep on learning. Keep loving your brothers and sisters. Let's work together and trust in God. And he's going to make a way somehow. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. I thank you, my brothers and sisters, for sharing this moment with me. Amen. I pray that, that, that you research your history well. I pray that if you didn't know, now you know that our ancestors didn't just sit down and take slavery lightly, they fought every day. I hope if you didn't know before now, you know that, that when they were liberated, they were liberated with nothing, no money, no land, nothing. It's, and they had to fight from nothing so that today you can have houses, you can have lands, you can have money in your bank, that you can be somebody. And so don't let your potential go to waste. Don't, don't, don't let what, what, God has predestined and placed into you waste. Stop blaming the system. Stop blaming situations and circumstances. Get up and fight. Get up and work the works of your hands. And God will make a way somehow.